The M language in Power Query has got quite a few shenanigans and one of those is the case sensitivity. Now you can't really turn off the case sensitivity in Power Query but you can actually get around it. No further ado, let's start or lowercase. Alright people, I'm in Excel and that's where I have a simple two columnar data, just two columns, the toy and the units and perhaps I'm just trying to apply filters. The filters that I'm trying to apply in this data are going to be case insensitive and I will try to break my query and then solve the problem. Take a look. In the toy column, maybe I want to keep all the toys which contain the word baby and let's just start with that. So in the text filters, I can easily do that through the text contains option and I can say that I'd like to keep something with the word baby. Now the problem is that I intentionally chose to write the B here as lowercase but the B in the filter was uppercase. So obviously this is going to create a problem and the query is not going to give me any output. So if I say okay, the query did not match with the word baby because the baby was uppercase. Here the baby is lowercase which is causing me a problem and it gets me a blank query. How do we solve that? A lot of people are going to try to modify the lowercase uppercase of the original text and then try to apply the filter. So what people could try to do that is that right click on this column, transform that column into a lowercase in the first place and then try to apply the filter which then filters the text and you get the correct output. But this is not the ideal way to kind of go ahead and manipulate the original case sensitivity of the column but let's just try something else. So I'm going to get rid of this lowercase step first of all. Once I get rid of that, I am uh, getting the blank table once again and I will try to modify this particular function that I have written which is text.contains right here. Now text.contains does not come by default with the optional input parameter. So let's just add that. I'll put a comma in the end right here and add the optional input parameter which asks me that do you have a comparer function or not. So my comparer function is ignore case, and if I happen to write that this is going to start to ignore case sensitivity and still give you the output. So if I just now commit to this particular thing and press enter, uh, okay, press enter and this now is going to ignore the case without me having to change the case sensitivity of the original column and then I still get the result. Now you could argue with me that this is not in like something that I'm trying to do. Maybe you're not trying to apply the filter to as contains filter. So I don't really want to keep all the baby items. I want to keep the baby item. So maybe you would want to go here and keep the only item as baby in which scenario you do not really get the text.contains function. So how do we solve this problem? Let's go with that. All right, in order for you to be able to solve this problem, what you need to understand is the comparer.ordinalIgnore case function itself. If you understand that function, you'll be able to solve this problem. I've created a dummy query right here which is where the only function that I have in the formula bar is that this function and let's just try to kind of dissect this function and try to make sense of it. In this function comparer.ordinalIgnore case there are two inputs. The first input is the x input and the second input is the y input. That's what you enter. Now as in x and y you can write anything, a number, a text, anything. Now I have written here in terms of x I have written the uppercase a. In terms of y I have written the lowercase a. Now obviously for both the x and the y, it's going to compare both of them after ignoring the case. So after the case has been ignored, it returns you the value 0. That means that um, the, both the items are matching and the match has been found. Now it also gives you a negative 1 and a positive 1 as an output. Now those scenarios are rare to find, but I'll show you what those actually mean. But we are going to use 0 as an output for now. So let's just say that if I happen to write a b right here. now. In this scenario, you can see that if I were to arrange A and B in the alphabetical order after the case has been ignored, so uh, then in that scenario, X is going to be greater than Y or A is going to come first and then B is going to come. In that scenario, this is actually going to give you negative one because uh, if you sequence them, them out in the ascending order, A comes first and then B comes. Now, if you reverse that order, so if you happen to write a B first and then the A second, a capital A or a lowercase a doesn't matter because we are trying to ignore the case then the output that you get is 1. So those are the three kind of outputs that you get in this particular function the 0, the negative 1 and the positive 1. What we are actually concerned with is the 0 output which is where the case is ignored and the values are matched. Alright now let's just go back to the query and start to feed this function uh, inside of the query and start to solve that particular problem. Alright I'm back at my query and this is what I'm trying to solve. So as of now, I don't really want to apply the text.contains function, which 
finds all the matching words, but I want to find only the word baby, right? And as of now, the case matches. So this is uppercase B and this is also the uppercase B. But what if the case was not the same? And then in that scenario, this is not going to match. So if I just happen to write B small, and this is obviously going to give me an error or like a blank table. How do I solve this? I'm going to use the function dot comparer dot ordinal ignore case. Now remember that that function that we just spoke about asks you for two inputs. The first one was the X and the second one was the Y. So this becomes the X, which is nothing but my toy column. Every single value in that toy columns becomes the X input and the word baby against which you're trying to compare becomes the Y input. Now, obviously you can't really have an equals to sign in between because you're writing a function and these two need to be separated by a comma. So I'm just going to cancel out the equals to sign, put a comma right here commit to that function and it still gives me an error. Okay. Now this function is trying to say is that this function gives you the output as zero, one or negative one, right? Now I need to convert that zero, one, negative one into a true and false so that power query can go in every single row of the table, apply true or apply false condition and keep the rows that are giving you the true as an output. How do we do that? Now I know that this function is going to give me a zero and zero is what I'm trying to seek. So I'm just going to equate that with zero and we are done. So if I now commit to that and press enter, even though I wrote B small and I still get the correct output as baby filtered in my data. Awesome. All right, people, welcome back. I slept, I woke up, I realized that I have missed a very critical problem that I'd like to add to this video. And therefore you see me in a different clothing and on a different day recording this additional part of the video that you're going to see all together. Okay, so don't mind me changing the shirt and coming again on the video, but what you're going to see, you're going to enjoy this. So please take a look. Another very important part of uh, case sensitivity in Power Query is to deal with removing duplicates in any particular table. Take a look at the data. We have two simple columns right here, letters and numbers, and the letters column does contain duplicates. That means A, although uppercase, is a duplicate of the lowercase of A. But since Power Query is case sensitive, and if you just go on this particular column and say that I'd like to remove the duplicates, let me just do it again. Just cancel it out, right click on this column, and I say that I'd like to remove the duplicates. Where are you? Remove duplicates. This is not going to remove the duplicates because uh, A, uppercase is different than a lowercase. But what if you wanted to consider the duplicates without the case sensitivity? How are you going to deal with that? Now we're going to call the same formula that we have been working with, which is comparer dot ordinal ignore case. Where do we enter this function inside of the formula? So table dot distinct function is the function that appears inside of that function. You're going to write the name of the table, which is right here, nothing but the entire table. From this particular table, which column are you trying to use to remove the duplicates? I'm trying to use the letters column right here, which is where I'm trying to remove the duplicates. Now, inside of this particular list right here, I'm going to feed in two inputs, not one, but two inputs. Now, I'm going to put a comma and I'm going to say that that the equation is nothing but uh, ordinal uh, ignore case. That's the function that I write. And I now commit to this formula and press enter. And this is going to now start to remove duplicates without considering the case sensitivity. Now, this is going to be highly, highly useful. All right, two very important things before you leave. The first one is that the technique that I shared with you only gets over the limitation of case sensitivity within the data inside your tables. You still have to write your formulas in a case sensitive way and you can't really have a workaround on that. I'm sorry if I disappointed you on that. The second very important thing is that Power Query documentation provides the comparer.ordinal ignore case function and they talk about that the only output that you're going to get of this function is a zero output. They don't talk about the negative one and the positive one that we have spoken about. Now, this is as per my experience of working with the function, the definition and the result that I have shown it to you in this particular video. But if Microsoft decides to rule me out and they give another better explanation of how the negative one and a positive one is achieved, please go with that and do not rely on my experience because they have developed it. I'm sure they would know better than me. All right, that was all about it. Let me know if you have any questions around this. In the end, a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses. In case you are starting out with Power BI and you'd like to learn the fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more challenging, more dense and more complicated problems, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking around. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.